Consecration is a process, a life process. It's like this. If you transform mud into food, we call this agriculture. If you make food into flesh and bone, we call this digestion, integration. If you make flesh into mud, we call this cremation. Or if you can make this flesh or even a stone or even an empty space into a divine possibility, that is called consecration. Modern science is telling you everything is same energy, manifesting itself in a million different ways. If that is so, what you call as the divine, what you call as the stone, what you call as a man, what you call as a woman, what you call as a beast, what you call as a demon, it's all the same energy functioning in different ways. So it is just a question of technology, that if you have the necessary technology, the simple space around you, you can make it into a divine exuberance. You can just take a piece of rock and make it into your god or a goddess. So this is the phenomena of consecration, which particularly in this culture, enormous amount of knowledge about this dimension of life was perpetuated and this was held as the most important thing because it doesn't matter what you're eating, how you are, how long you live, that at some point a need will come that you want to get in touch with the source of creation. And if that possibility is not created across the planet, if that possibility is not available to every human being who seeks, then that society has failed to provide true well-being for a human being. Because what kind of dwelling you live in is not important. Whether your house is ten thousand square feet or just thousand square feet is not going to make an ultimate difference in your life but you are around a consecrated space, that is going to make a phenomenal difference in your life. So we want to open up this possibility because it's my dream, someday the world should… the humanity should live in consecrated spaces. Your home should be consecrated, your street should be cons consecrated, your office should be consecrated. Wherever you spend time, those spaces must be consecrated, there is a certain beauty. Your evolution need not stick to Darwinian scale. You can simply leapfrog and go if you live in a consecrated space. The 9th of October this year, we have already announced the Naga consecration. In the Bangalore center, the first thing that is being consecrated is Naga. You might have seen the image of Naga in the yoga center. The one of the yoga center has not been consecrated because it's placed geometrically in such a position that the three solidified mercury lingas right behind it and also the dhyana linga, it is aligned with all this. So it will grow by itself. But the Bangalore Naga has a core where it is done with solidified mercury, it's a full-fledged consecration. Naga is very important for one who wants to know perception. Today, if you are able to see, even your physical eyes I'm saying, if you are able to see fifty percent better, if you're able to hear fifty percent better, smell, taste and touch sensations fifty percent better, would your life be greatly enhanced? Even if it's physical, yes. So if you are able to see and feel things which are beyond physicality, that is when life gets super enhanced. It's not by listening to talks, by accumulating information, no. Information is a burden over a period of time, perception. So this is why 
the first thing we are creating is Naga.